building a successful career in HR is not something that you do on accident. You've got to be really intentional about what you're doing. And today we're going to be talking about the things you need to keep in mind when building your HR career. Hey, hey, it's Brittany Graddick, CEO and founder of Talented Teams Consulting. I am back with another video. So today we're talking about all the things you need to keep in mind when you're building your career in HR. We're going to talk about some strategies and some techniques and maybe even some pitfalls that you want to avoid. We're trying to figure out ways to build a fruitful and productive and a lasting career. Whether you went into HR because you knew exactly what you wanted to do or you landed in HR because you were good with people or good with payroll or good with something else, either way, now that you're in the role, you want to make sure you continue to build along those skills, build upon those skills. And so today we're going to be talking about things you need to make sure you keep in mind. I started my HR career as an unpaid intern, not really knowing what HR was. And so today I work in executive leadership, leading not only HR, but also training and also compliance. And so I say all that to say, no matter where you are in your HR career today, Understand and know that if you're approaching it intentionally, you have the power to grow your career beyond what you can even imagine. But you've got to make sure you have the foundational aspects in place first. First things first, you want to make sure you understand the HR industry as a whole. Now, when you say you work in HR, that can mean anything. That can mean that you work in staffing, you work in benefits, you work in payroll. There's so many aspects and so many disciplines within HR but you've got to make sure that you understand as an HR professional how the landscape continues to change. It's now 2022 and over the last, gosh, three years specifically, the, the expectations of employees have really changed and that's changed the way that our workplaces function as well. But when you're going throughout your day, you want to keep in mind, where are you going to find out resources? Are you tuning into SHRM? Are you tuning into your local employer association? Are you working with a mentor or a coach? You want to make sure you have things that are at your disposal tools and resources at your fingertips because the world is continuing to change and so the expectations of you are changing as well. I'm in the middle of facilitating a class right now and I talk a lot about how the expectations of us is changing. Previously, the work that HR professionals did was more transactional. So, you know, you do this to get that. Now, if you're not looking forward to being more strategic, to be more uh, transformational, you're going to be a little bit behind the curve. So you want to make sure that you are staying up to date on the trends that are happening within the HR industry, but also keep in mind that you've got to look forward and know especially what's important to your organization. Understanding what matters to your employees is super, super critical. It's a non-negotiable. What matters to my team might not matter to your team, might not matter to the next team, but that's why you have to be really in tune and have a finger on the pulse of what's happening within your organization what are their biggest pain points what is the skills gap how can you really support them where they are what ways can you develop your employees because development of employees is a key key piece as to why employees are leaving today so again making sure you stay up to date on all these industry chains is non-negotiable you've got to go beyond that transactional work and being intentional with your time and how you use it is going to be super super helpful to make sure you meet that goal Building on that foundational knowledge of understanding what the industry is requiring of you, you've also got to make sure that you're building yourself up individually. I got asked in an interview not too long ago, what is my best advice for a new leader who's getting ready to be a manager for the first time? And so typically you get advice about make sure you support your team, make sure you are staying up to date on what's happening, make sure you're visible as a leader. And all those things are very, very important. But my advice was a little different. My advice was the same amount of time that you spend into leading others and making sure they have what they need. Make sure you spend that same amount of time to build yourself up. Fill your cup. I believe one of the biggest mistakes that a leader could make is to not build yourself up. There is no pinnacle that you ever reach where you don't have anything else to learn. And I feel that as a leader, even if you don't have any direct reports, as a leader, as a person who is influencing things around you, you have a responsibility to keep your own cup full. A responsibility to make sure you are consistently getting better and better and better. So some of the skills you want to get better on are communication, making sure you're able to communicate effectively. Time management, making sure that your day does not run away from you. You have time to do the things that are required of you. Problem solving, making sure you have an ability to look at multiple perspectives from different points of view and not have blinders on when you're looking at difficult situations. And leadership, even if you don't have any direct reports, because in my business, I work primarily with HR Department of One Professionals. Even if you're working by yourself, you are still a leader. Leadership is influence, John Maxwell says. Nothing more, nothing less. You've got to make sure you are building your leadership skills consistently. One mistake that I see HR professionals make and other leaders make as well is trying to wait until you get there to build those skills. By that point, it's too late. If there's anything that you're aspiring to, we're going to talk about that a little bit later, any goals that you have for yourself. But if there's anything that you're aspiring to, you've got to work on that right now. 
My next piece of advice would be building a strong network of professionals. So I talked about this in a prior video, the importance of being able to build a network of HR professionals and industry professionals as well. But when you're working as an HR department of one, you want to make sure that you are not trying to do this by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. In another video, I'll also talk about the four pieces of your team that you need even when you're by yourself. Tune into that video as well. But you've got to have a network around you. If you are only going off of what you know as a professional or or in your personal life as well, you're going to be consistently behind. You have to be able to pull different resources from other people because that's going to help you to build your own experience as well. Ways that you can build your network within the HR industry specifically is to get in tune with different HR associations. If you're a part of the Society for Human Resource Management, whether nationally or locally, tune into those meetings, attend those webinars, figure out different ways to do lunch and learns and conferences and just figure out ways to network and meet new people. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be nervous. You might not have much to say, but the more you do it, the better it'll become for you, the easier it'll get for you. And believe it or not, these contacts that you make are going to stick with you years and years down the line. I'm nearly 15 years into my HR experience and my contacts are continuously building into me, helping me to, to do more things and to be a better leader myself. But again, I'm only saying these things because I know that it has helped me to, to have my career to go uh, as well as it has. And so I hope this is going to be helpful for you. If you have not already downloaded my free guide, How to Thrive as an HR Department of One, Stop this video, go download that, and then come right back. It's going to help you to figure out different things you need to focus on as you're building your career as an HR department of one. It can be challenging. It can be difficult. It can be lonely. But I make this channel because I want you to understand that you are not in this thing by yourself. You are not doing it alone, and you have a resource out there to help you to get better and better and better. Something else that you want to consider when you're talking about building your career is being able to navigate HR challenges. Again, when you're dealing with people, People are always going to people. And so because of that, there are certain things you can't anticipate, whether it's an employee relations issue or an employee development issue or a, a strategy issue or a talent acquisition issue. When you involve people, it's always going to be some form of unpredictability. And so use that to build your HR muscle. Use that to build your experience. Use that to build your credibility. But the way you approach these challenges says a lot about the way you're going to be able to come through them. Because if you approach them consistently with a defeatist attitude, with a pessimist attitude, with an attitude of you don't even know why this is a problem, you're going to continue to feel like you're behind. You've got to be the positive one in the bunch. When everything else is, feels like it's crumbling around you, you've got to be the calm in the middle of the storm. But doing these things is not natural. It doesn't come easily. And it's much easier said than done. The more you do it, the easier it will become for you. Strategies for overcoming these challenges, a lot of the times, and ironically, it's not even dealing with the challenge itself. A lot of these things you have to prepare for ahead of time. That's making sure that you are in tune with who you are personally, making sure you're not stressed out and that's leading to other things, making sure you're navigating your day correctly, making sure you're able to handle your position in a way so that when curveballs are thrown your way, you're not thrown off kilter. If you need help navigating any of these things, feel free to book a discovery call with me or a strategy session. I am happy to work with you to help you to work through any of these challenges that you have. I understand how lonely it can be. When you're working as an HR department of one. So I make this channel again so that you understand that you might be solo, but you don't have to be alone. And then my next point when it comes to talking about building a successful career, you've got to make sure you have goals. Set career goals for yourself. Setting career goals is important because it helps you to know exactly where you're trying to go. It's easier to get to where you know you're trying to go. You want to make sure that you know exactly what you have in mind, whether it's a new title that you're striving for, whether it's a new initiative that you're trying to implement whether it's a new organization that you have your eye on, whatever your goal is, you want to make sure you have that goal, but write it down. The Bible says write the vision and make it plain. And it's been my experience that when I write my goals down, it makes it that much easier to accomplish them because I know exactly what it is I'm striving for. And I know whether I'm on that path or whether I'm not on that path. Not just setting goals, but then setting different objectives. How are you going to get there? Being super, super intentional. And if you work with me, you're going to get that word a lot. Being super, super intentional about what you do and why you're doing it and how you're going to get there is going to be so impactful to your career because you'll know exactly if you're on the right path or if you're not. 
Sometimes it's difficult to stay motivated when you're building your career and when you're tackling different things. You have a lot of ideas and opinions coming at you from multiple perspectives, but you've got to stay motivated and there's different ways you can do that. I'll talk often about your self-care and making sure you are attuned with who you are as a person, but also understand that you are more than your HR title. You've got to understand you're a whole person and your whole person deserves to be happy as well. If you're serious about building your career, some of my biggest tips include asking for more responsibilities once you have perfected or created a system around what you do every day. Figuring out ways to add more value and new ideas and new perspectives to your organization. And working closely with their senior leadership team so you can figure out how to position HR along with the business needs. Working in HR requires a specific combination of skills, development, and forward thinking. And to be successful requires each of these things. I hope you found this video helpful. If I could be of assistance in any way, if I could serve you at a higher level, please feel free to book a discovery call with me by clicking any of the links below. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.